What you need to remember is that we have this thing called a function. It is a calculational box, right? Where inputs come in and outputs come out and inside is a calculation that happens. Now the input values we call x and the output values we call f of x. This means a function that operates on x and it produces you know, values, calculational values. Now this function can be anything. It could be f of x, uh, or I should put parentheses here, f of x uh, is equal to you know, uh, x plus five where I take the input values, I add five to them, and then that's what I call f of x, and I, I dump them on the output. And so this is what a function is. Now, if you remember from the last lesson, when we, uh, when we graph these things, let's say I have a function like this. Here's a function, right? Is it a function or not? Well, the way you figure it out is, you know that you have these inputs, which are called x values, and you have these outputs called f of x values. And the input values come in, a calculation happens, and then a, a, an f of x value comes out, the output value. Well, we learned that we can do the vertical line test. And if it only crosses in one place, every single place on this uh, curve here, then it's a function. But why does the vertical line test do anything? And this is going to tie into these problems here. It's because the other very important uh, characteristic, characteristic of a function is that for a single input value x, you only get one and only one unique output value f of x or y, whatever you want to think about it. It's a one-to-one -one representation. So here, for every input value of x I, I put here along the x-axis, I only get one value out. One value in, 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 one value out. Because it's only one output for every input, it always crosses in one place. That's why the vertical line test works. So now that you know or remember why the vertical line test works, it's testing to make sure you have only one input and one output. And then we can apply it to these problems down here. If we have a different situation where we have a different kind of graph, like let's say something like this, does this represent a function or not? Well, no, it doesn't because it fails the vertical line test. No function. Why? Because for a single input value of x here, I have two unique different outputs, and it, that's why it fails the vertical line test. So now that we have refreshed our memory on that, let's turn our attention to a situation where we don't have a graph at all. We just have a table. So we have an input of negative 8 and an output of 16, input of negative 6, output of 12, and so on. Does this represent a function or not? Well, all you're really looking for is for every unique input in the table, which are these values, you only have one output value. So even without graphing it or doing a vertical line test, you know, yes, it is a function. Because the definition of a function means for every input you have, you have only one output value. If you were to graph it, you would see that that's the case and it would pass the vertical line test. All right, now let's you know, compare that to problem number two. Now for all of these values, one output, one output, one output, one output, one output, one output, but for, at negative nine, there's actually two outputs. That's the similar situation to here. We had an input here and two output values, and so it failed the vertical line test. This is gonna fail the vertical line test because if you were to graph it over at negative nine for x, you would have two values for y and it would fail that vertical line test. So without graphing anything, just by seeing this, you know it's not a function. Not a function. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Similar situation here. Input, one output. Input, one output. Input, one output. Input, two outputs. That's all it takes to kill it. It's not a function anymore because for a unique input here, we have two unique outputs. So this is not a function. If you graph this thing, it's going to fail the vertical line test. Now let's take a look at this one. This is interesting. This It's not really a trick question, but it can be tricky. So here we have input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output. Okay. Then you notice, wait a minute, here we have a number three here. It's repeated. So does that make it a function or not. You're not sure at first. Well, actually, this is still a function because even though we have a repeated number on the output, that's okay because this output goes with a negative one on the input. 
but this number goes with a positive one on the input. So basically for every unique input value I have, I still have a unique output. Yes, we have duplication of values, that's okay. That's okay to have the same output number, but every output number has to only go with one single input value. That's really what it boils down to. So we have, for this, we have a unique, uh, I should say a single output. Instead of using the word unique, let me say single. We have a single output here, we have a single output here, we have a single output here, all for different input values. So this is a function. It is a function. All right. What is not allowed is having two outputs tied to a single input value. That is what is not allowed. Take a look at our last problem. Is this a function or not? So we say, okay, here's the input, output, input, output. It doesn't look like we have any you know, extra numbers on the output, so it looks to be a function, but then you notice, okay, we have a similar situation. We have a negative four here on the output, which is repeated, and they're tied to the same number on the input, negative four. So you're kind of not sure, is it a function or is it not a function? So you have to think about what would this stuff look like if it were graphed? What would happen is you would graph all of these points and then you would get here, and you would go to negative four, negative four, and you would put a dot. Then you would graph these, and here, you would go to negative four and negative four, and you would put a dot right on top of the same location. So at the same input value, even though there's two table entries, it's the same input value and the same output value. So even though it looks like it's different, it's actually the same point. So if you were to graph that stuff, it would still pass the vertical line test because it's like having two points on top of each other, which doesn't change anything. For the unique input value of negative four, you still only have one output because it's the same number. So yes, this is a function. Now I hope these problems seem simple to you now that we've talked about it, but you're gonna have to trust me that if we didn't approach it the way I'm approaching it here, it can seem difficult because a lot of students, they learn what a function is from the vertical line test, but they don't actually know what the vertical line test is telling them. So when I give them a table of values, they don't have any idea what a function really is, and so they don't know what to look for in a table. That's why I tie it all back to this. A function is a box, it calculates stuff. Numbers come in, and we operate on them, and we do something with them, and then numbers come out. The input numbers are called x, and the output numbers are called f of x. We used to call them y values, but it's the same thing. And we graph them. Now, if we have a one-to-one -one relationship, single input, single output, then it will always pass the vertical line test because there'll only be one output for every input value of x, right? That's why it passes the vertical line test. But if you have something like this, where you have two output values lining up with the same input value, it will always fail that vertical line test. So when we look at tables, now we know what we're looking for. We're looking for, for every unique input, we should have one and only one unique output, all right? So that's what we learned here. So I'd like you to practice these, get a little more practice, and then follow me on to the next lesson. We will continue to build your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.